Hey, Dito, do you know what time it is? KT, is that time that we do that two-year anniversary thing that we've been doing for the last two years? Number two? Yes! Well, in this episode of the Kita Anime Podcast, Izuru takes some advice from Amuro Rei, Stella takes a dark turn, and Aaron, he's still useless. All that more, coming up. The show begins in three, two, one. It's time for the Kita Anime Podcast with Dito and KT Data. The Kita Anime Podcast is brought to you by two years of the Kita Anime Podcast. Thanks, guys. Check out ktdata.net for some giveaways. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Kita Anime Podcast. I am KT Data. And I'm Dito. And this is the two-year-old podcast about watching anime. Stuff and things. And stuff. And, and things. whatnots and shenanigans and um, things yeah so how are you doing today dito and stuff i'm actually doing well <laughs> kt ah good times for all it's all, it's all because you're z- you're zombie zambi zambi sorry zambi. yeah i'll be all because of that is actually why it put me in a good mood right now yeah so for for all you guys who have no idea what we're talking about head on over to extralife.com and check out the comic scott Dr- johnson drew of the zambi it's awesome it is awesome. I love I love Scott's work. He he does make really cool stuff. Um, <laughs> but for all of you guys who are just barely watching Kita for the first time, where have you been Run for away. the past two years? First of all, <laughs> run away um, right now. Just telling you that right now. Just joking. But this is the podcast where Dito and I. It's kind of like a book club. So Dito and I we go watch a couple episodes of an anime, then we come talk about the episodes and we mull, we enjoy, and we make fun of or we bitch and moan about it either way but you guys might be on wait a minute where are we watching these things just pause this podcast go to ktdata.net look for the show notes for episode five of the uh what is this uh summer yeah summer season of 2013 and it's Uh, cold and it's the end of summer 2013 and uh just go look for that there's links and you can stream it you don't even have to like know how to do all you don't need to know how to do all that illegal stuff it's all Nice, clean stream from the licensors. Cool stuff. Dun, dun, dun. Remember back in the day when you couldn't do stuff like that? <sighs> I remember the back in the day when we were using VHS and a piece of paper. You had a piece of paper. Wow. Yeah, I know. I, I was elitist. <laughs> that was fancy. I had the paper. I had the paper with the translations on it. I just had to figure out where the hell it was. <laughs> fancy. All right. So. I tried watching Dragon Ball like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's jump into our first anime, which we are also saying goodbye to. This song, you would definitely say goodbye to. No, we're gonna enjoy this song. No, this we're is not. the last time we're gonna no, hear no, it. No, we're not. No, we're not. And our first anime of the night is Ginga Kikotai Majestic Prince, and it is brought to you by Barriers. Just physically penetrate them. So, last episode, Izuru gets benched. Every nation finally gets an AS, a, a, S, a, H, S, M, B. Wow, you think I could say it after two seasons of this. And even though it's bigger, doesn't mean it can aim. <laughs> On there. All right, so we are finally to the um, final penultimate, the, ult- the ending point of Majestic Prince right here. Um, and Izuru is still stuck on the uh, Godeon while everybody else is kind of fighting for their um, lives and they decided well if the energy beam is not going to work let's use conventional weapons but they run into a snag right Dito? I wouldn't call it conventional so their brilliant idea was to take their subspace rocket and to shoot it directly into the line of fire into the gate but you know up to this point we always seen him like make a plan it takes like usually 10 minutes or something like that to explain the plan what they're doing all this stuff no it's like you know take the rockets go shoot them and then they get shot there it's like wait what that all took up like 20 seconds 
it's like a game of uh, Space Invaders, dude. They just, the missiles don't last that long. Well, even still, it's like they're <laughs> using the sub lights, rockets, and everything, and you figure, okay, you know, they'll probably sit there and like, sit, like protect the rockets, go, fail team five, you know, something like that. But it's just like going, it's just, whew, and then boom. Then you see that, like, oh, by the way, like the best defense general is sitting there, so you're not going to get very far. Well, it, it's a good point where they're having it right here. It's, so this it's is true. it's it's their way of uh, having every single Wugaru general now in battle and their armies battling in the human race in their final stand. Because the, the, keep in mind, they emptied every single reserve ship, every single reserve person off Earth to go on this mission right here. So it's all or nothing. Yes, and also, Rev, you suck. <laughs> Just want to state, I want to state that on air right now. Uh, if you enjoyed this song, you suck. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> and then, so, we, we also kind of see Izuru finally uh, mastering the Zero system. It, it, let, let's be honest, this is the Zero system. Where the only difference is the Zero system in this one actually can take control of you. It still drives you insane, so why? You know, I mean, come on. He was having some personality disorders during the battles. Let's be honest about that. No, I, th I thought that his contacts were reverting. <laughs> I've never had my contacts do that in my entire life, Dito. I don't know what you're talking about. Then you're not doing it right because <laughs> zero knows how to. But on the, on the side note, it's still talking about this too. Um, you saw like the his his ASMRB thing of Mecha Doom. Okay, let's let's, let's 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 let's. Since this is the final time, we're actually going to say it's A H S M B. You can say that. Yeah, I'm not going to try. A H S M B. What he said. <laughs> that there are two phases to this too for the Julia system. You have this one where it, it heightens your attack or it heightens your battle instincts, and then there is one where it that you master it, like you actually come to terms with the whole system. And I guess it is the true form of the Julia system. Yeah, Which except they're light hot wings. Got. They're light hot wings. Light hot wings. Come on, let's be honest light about hot this. Wings, yes. They so pulled Tenchi out of this, it made me feel yeah, It was like the merging of Gundam Wing and Tenchi put together. Because let's some people are like, wait, no, this is straight off Gundam Wing. He had real wings on there. These are definitely light hot wings. That are wings made of energy. Yes, and yeah. for all those who don't, uh, don't If you don't believe me, true, poster. Poster. Yeah, go. Poster. Go. Go look it up because <laughs> look up Tenchi Lighthawk Wings. You'll see various mo various versions of it, but the one that was in there is definitely from Tenchi. Yeah, the original series. So uh, that's what I think. You know, Get, that's our nerdism for right now. Yeah, <laughs> and then so they decide since missiles didn't work, uh, beam weapons didn't work. Let's just ram the biggest thing we have into the gate. And what's is, what's the biggest thing they have, Dito? A giant nipple. <laughs> I don't care what you say. That I, I, the star I, I, rose is a damn nipple. I, I wouldn't say just. I, I wouldn't nipple. say just the nipple. I would probably say a good, you know, portion of the boob too. You know, like at least think about it. It's not fully circular, so maybe half a boob. But so I wasn't gonna say boob on air. But now that you've got to say it, yes, it is a boob. Yeah, it's a boob. It's pink too. It's flesh colored. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you know what really kind of is weird just because you know how it's like uses the thrusters behind it so it's kind of you know going vertically so. but right before it runs into the stupid portal why does it turn like axes like does that I, even I, make sense I, I, katie you realize we just used boob nipple thrusters and all in the same sentence here I don't care. We're talking about space things, man. It's yeah. all good. It's about space yeah, things. Especially, especially in space. But, like, you notice how it turns, right? And it, like, stands up yeah. almost like a top. And I'm like, why did you just waste your energy doing that? That makes no sense on why, why you would do that. It makes complete sense, I think. You know why? Anime physics? Because Honey Badger. <laughs> That's all. But yeah. It, it's. I mean, that just didn't really make too much sense for that. Um but I don't, and then so I didn't. I don't remember if I said. Did we say this in a previous episode, where I guessed how the ending of uh, Majestic Prince would be just like Gundam, where she, where uh, here, um, uh, Amora Ray is just floating 
through space and he like floats out of his Gundam while all his like friends and stuff come save him. You know, so the ending of So that was supposed to be a joke and not an actual prediction. Yeah, I know. I know it was, but (laughs) the thing okay, so at the end, all we have to say is that it was it was vaguely predictable. But I will put this way. Even though we had our ups and downs majestic prints, it turned out to be pretty good in all all said and done. I would have to say so. Like, you know, you go in expecting to see a mecha anime, but it turns out the mechas were kind of more background things. You know, it's more about these characters. I actually liked these characters. It was actually a nice thing because in most mecha shows, you don't see too much humor. They actually kept the humor pretty consistent. Yeah. And I want to know what happens to all these characters, you know? What, you know, does um OAV. You know, OAV. D- does K and um and Izuru hook up? You know, it oh. kinda looks like everybody's That's hinted. That's everybody's hinted kinda cause... pushing over there and um what's uh what's her face? Does she finally meet her true love somewhere? Um with the pickle or the what was it the pickled pickle? innards? Guts? Pickled innards, yeah. yeah. And uh, uh-huh. does um, Asagi, you know, finally adopt himself into that entire family with his pit, of his pit crew? Um, does his the, big brothers? Yeah, does, that does, has does, it's also a big brother to the leader that yeah. is also the oldest now because and all yeah. Anyways, yeah, confusion, it's confusion. But I really, I'm really curious what happens. You know, I would have wished they. It's probably gonna show up in an OAV somewhere. Yeah, but, or they could just take the easy way out it's like done yeah you know what happens to Teoria finally hook up with Azuru's dad again that's a little disturbing um <laughs> really disturbing uh if you think about it um but overall yeah like I would recommend this as a watch you know I mean, it wouldn't be like on the top of the list but it would it wouldn't be at the bottom either it Mid-tier. It's definitely one to it's definitely one to put in your list under Mecca. Like yeah. any of your Mecca shows and you're just kind of filing through those list, put it in there and somewhere. It's fun just too. In there. It's it's, fun. it's good to watch. Yeah, it's fun. If you're expecting a lot of like robots and you know kind of going into the technical aspect of it, it might not be for you. But you know, these were a pair of likable characters on there. So, I enjoyed it. What would you say? Two thumbs up, or how how many? Whatever your rating system is going to be. Um, I I give it one thumb and three fingers. Mm, interesting choice of fingers. <laughs> 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 All right, let's. Speaking of fingers, how about some bloody ones after airsoft practice on our next anime? Dun dun dun. And our next anime is Stella Jokakun Kokoka C Cubed Boo, and it's brought to you by Medic! Healing those around you until the last five minutes. <laughs> last episode, we come across some illegal gun mods. Ow! 24 hour tournaments, you know, can be fun. And what it really truly means playing zombie. <laughs> uh, anyone got a gun? You bad. You bad. Anyways. So, in this one, we kind of see what it means to play fair. I mean, in a lot of sports, you are encouraged to play fair, you know, because we really? all played everything. Well, baseball, is, def- baseball uh, is definitely not encouraged to play fair. Let's just roid everybody I- up. Okay, well, as a, in most sports, <laughs> you're encouraged to play fair, except for baseball, <laughs> apparently. And, you know, and you see, like, what happens if you cheat. You know, you have some consequences to pay if you are caught cheating. In most cases, whenever you're caught cheating and it was in a tournament and everything and you won because of it, you may have your title stripped, you know, and then you have to go through the embarrassment of, like, saying, oh, you know, what I did, you know, stuff like this. But, in a lot of cases, too, it doesn't go that way. So, say, for example, you did say you cheated, but the person who saw you cheat didn't say that you did. 
that means you got to live with that. You know, if you really want to put it on yourself, you can just say, oh, OK, you know, blah, blah, blah. I didn't I didn't cheat. So we can go along or it starts eating at you. So, you know, there's, there's by the way, we didn't cheat with the two year thing. We actually did. We've been doing this for two years. Just if anybody's <laughs> wondering. Yes. It, it's hard to believe it's two years. I still can't get over that. Had long hair back then. That's all short. And, and you know, I kind of we couldn't mind- see each other really because <laughs> our internets were all weird and it sounded all different. Yeah, and uh, I, I was I was very I lagged in real life at that time. You still lag, but not that bad. <laughs> we'll fix that. We'll fix that. We'll fix that in December when Apple takes all my money. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. But so what, this is interesting. Yura is kind of going through this whole transformation in these two episodes I didn't expect to see from Stella like I really didn't expect seeing her like just go into this it's all about the W it's not a, you know no more it's no longer more about having fun it's no longer you know making friends and everything it's just all about the W yeah in this case you see what's called getting obsessed you know me and KT are no stranger to this obsession because you know you yeah, KT. But I don't think I've gotten this. that maniacal, have I? Have Not I ever? Ha, ha, like, and this is this is where it, it differs because how it is showing in the show right now is that you've seen Yura getting way too obsessed in the game, trying to get better. It's like she got so absorbed into this game. I mean, I've seen people play Airsoft and get way too absorbed into it, and then they start losing track of like what's actually important to them and the reason why they started. So. That's what you see in this in the new episodes of Stella is that you know it shows what happens if you get too absorbed into it and you start becoming obsessed with like in this case uh, your your kill count. Yeah. You know she's put on the medic side of it, I guess to teach her in in words like trying to like look out for others and everything because she was more focused on being an attacker. Yeah. And, so well yeah speaking yeah. of medics let let's introduce our uh, airsoft game type of the week on here yes. so what is that do you know um it's a normal game practice you know just um what we call it, just a normal skirmish but this one you have medics um the way that they present it in this version of the of their game medic is that uh you have these little ribbons basically like little straps and if you're shot you're say out and then you have to call medic at that point whoever is desi- as designated as the medic has to run over there and put an armband on them, basically, and then they get back in the game. But because of that, too, the medic has to be very, very careful because if the medic is shot, they're out. And then you're done because the medic can't be revived. So how they do it in this case... And That's this why I'd is, always have two medics in StarCraft when I was playing. Yes. <laughs> the medic to heal the medic. But if you're... If you at the end of the game, you have to count how many wristbands or how many bandages you like each team has got. But also, I never saw this before, but the last five minutes of the game, the medic can actually attack because in most cases, medics don't attack. So this was quite, it was a quite interesting uh, game scenario that I think I want to try sometime. So, uh, so you haven't actually played me- medic in real life, have you? Oh, I have. I've played a medic game, mm-hmm. but it's mostly like, you know, we didn't have bandages or stuff like that. Whoever was designed as the medic could still shoot, but if someone's if someone gets shot, you have to go over there and touch them. Uh-huh. And so, like, doesn't that kind of ask for the other team to kind of camp around injured players until the medic comes out and try to pelt them? In a lot of cases, it does, but it also forms up another team strategy, too, because, you know, if you... If you send uh, all your guys too far and they get shot, that means the medic has to run all the way over there. But if you're in a small group, you know, that actually can hold down a fort and everything, if someone's shot, they, all they do is just kind of walk over there and bandage you or touch you and you're back in the game. That's what's very encouraged and they increase more of a team play. Yeah. How do you keep score if you're not like using bandages or stuff? We don't. Um, basically, it just comes down to whoever gets shot, whoever is like out first. Like if you can shoot the medic, that means all you do is just take out the team. Okay. You know, okay. but we never actually kept score like that before. That's something I've never seen before. So it's for me, it's something I like to try in our next game. Because th- then you could probably, you know, because those games probably could go a while if the team's defending the medic fairly well. 
on there. Or the medic, or the medic is actually really good dodging BBs. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, for like the for this kind of score thing, you you know, you could do like, hey, let's have a uh, two hour or an hour time limit or something like that, right? I yeah, I think in that case, it was really really fun. I mean, but having to do the bandages, I was just kind of wondering, like, because there's like thirty some odd bandages. Am I going? How long were you playing? Anime physics. I know. I'm, I'm just thinking like our play. If I got, if I had to do thirty people, my team sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying that right now. It's like we've we've gone against some of the some of the bigger airsoft groups here. And do you get to wear a cool helmet too? I don't want to wear that helmet. It's probably it's probably <laughs> filled with lice or something. <laughs> but no, seriously though, that we've held out against some of the some of the top tiered players in this state just by doing you know the, the shoot and run tactic you know it's a militia tactic you just you just fire at him itself then you run back that Duh. is the it's the kind of tactics we used and we fared against them because they weren't used to that kind of tactics run for the hills dito run for the hills no literally there we ran for the hills <laughs> Where we play, there's rolling hills. Yeah, it's it, that's interesting. So, I mean, how much? Uh, so, we're almost done with the series on here. How many other different game types do you think they're going to talk about? I know? think it's going to come down to more of like what it means to be a player. Like this, is my prediction is that it's teaching people that what it actually means to play a game and what is actually more important in the game. You know getting having the fun or actually playing the game because we see this in sports a lot too and just about any sports that some people get too involved with it that they just lose track of the reasons why they're actually playing it yeah that's it's it's, kind of it's going to be interesting especially this darker turn that we've kind of seen in this episode of stella i thought it was all going to be sunshines and daisies for the entire anime but i guess we're wrong um and cockroaches yeah and so, and uh, one programming note for everybody who's actually following us on our discussion on Stella. Our next episode, instead of doing two episodes of Stella, we're just going to finish it off and do three episodes of Stella because there's 13 episodes in Stella. Um, and our other two animes are actually wrapping up Two Majestic Prince already wrapped up. So instead of doing just um, 11 and 12, we are going to do 11, 12, and 13. So make sure you guys watch all of them and we'll discuss during that time. Um, or something. Yeah, speaking of animes wrapping up, I can't wait until this next one does. <sighs> one more episode. Still trying to figure out the reason why some people are like obsessing over this. At least the music's cool. And our final anime of the night is Attack on Titan or Shingeki no Kyojin. And it is brought to you by Plan B or C or D. Always have a backup to the backup of the backup plan. Yeah. And barrels. And barrels. <laughs> also, I want to note in this too, Coons has now said Annie is sexy. Dude. <laughs> I think you need like a flesh girlfriend and not just a body pillow at this point um <laughs> so last episode Aaron turns into a titan and then gets eaten duh um Levi's power goes over 9,000 and now we get bored with the story again because this is what attack on titan does <laughs> oh man yes. so what's happening now is randomly it cuts to the the inner gates, so the inner city, and it shows you all these. Remember the military police; those are they're supposedly the best of the best of the best, and only like the top, top, top of every recruiting class can. Uh, yeah, Coons lied to me. Um, only get into the military police, right? So yeah. we we kind of discover that the military police. Out of all the cores there, they're probably the weakest just because they're, it goes straight to the head. Their success goes straight to the head. They're supposedly the best, but they're the most power abusing out of all of them. Yeah, and usually comes down to this, well, at least I can determine, is that they score the highest in their class, so they get put at the top positions 
and they're at the safest point, so that means they don't have to do anything. Yeah, I've, I've met a couple people like this in life where they do well in their classes and stuff, and then stick them into a situation where they gotta actually do something completely useless. Um, on there, so it, it's kind of interesting, and you know, of course, since they they don't want to do anything, they'll have all the new kids do it, right? But we do see something a little bit different here. I mean, we see a bit of what we like to. Well, you think that when something goes wrong, people will do something? No, not in this case. It, it, it's common to be crooked, corrupt, and you know, deal in the black market. Apparently, behind the gates. Yeah, and but, to beat cadets. Yeah, to beat cadets. So we see a bit of we see a bit of like inner workings once you get that far into the gates but that's not actually what the story apparently is about yeah it's about getting Aaron away from everything so let's discuss the plan yeah so the plan is that they're gonna get Aaron away because Aaron is gonna get turned over to the military police so he can get dissected and whatnot so his buddies which include Armin um, is gonna go in and try to get him out of the coop um, so, you know, but they need help from somebody at the gates to get them through the gates. And, and remember, this, one of their this, form- comes, one, this one, comes in one of their former. Sorry, KT. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, this comes in a long forgotten character that was with them the, as a candidate, Annie, the one who tripped Aaron in the first place, saying, Down, bitch. So cruel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, Armin, Armin is. To convince her to let him to, to help Aaron escape, and uh, after this stupid, stupid, stupid speech from Armin about what it means to be good and bad and all that nonsense, yeah, it wasn't. It, I, I think it was meant to be some kind of like powerful, motivating speech, but it was like weak, really weak. Well, it comes down to a couple different factors that I see. Um, we see that after the whole plan to get Aaron out, which they start going into the like the aqueducts, I guess, of uh, under the city, and, saying, and Annie's like, "Oh, I'm claustrophobic. I can't do this stuff." Blah blah blah. And we soon find out that Annie actually is the female Titan. So you know, dun, big dun, surprise! Dun! Big surprise there. And then. It cuts to another backstory. Yay! I hate how they tell stories in this show. I, I mean, I can understand t- telling some backstory to it, but they don't need to go that far in depth and saying like exactly how. But on the good news, it wasn't that long. Yeah, it wasn't that long, but it just makes you hate Aaron that much more because they're in the aqueducts. <laughs> Annie's in her cool. Titan form. She's smashing the aqueducts with her foot on there. Um, and they got to get out, and, well, plan B was Aaron's going to fight Annie if they couldn't get into the aqueducts. Guess what? Dude can't transform. Again. <sighs> I. Uh, it's because uh, Aaron really is indecisive, and I'm just going to say this. We've said it through the show before, so if Aaron is like Shinji. I want to punch him. Yes. Multiple and times. Mer- most more reason than that, but. And Coons wants an Annie body pillow. Yeah. Thank you, Coons. <laughs> 60 body pillows is enough. You don't need 61. Um, so now that's... you need 69. <laughs> <laughs> get, get, get it. Um, but, you know, it's so, it, you know, he sits there, he tries, he, you know, almost gnaws his entire hand off, and he still doesn't transform him. So, guess what? Um, Armin and, uh, and Misaka. And, and, yeah, Mikasa has to run out into two different holes and try to do it. And of course, what happens after they run out trying to be the diversion? He gets Aaron, stomped. Aaron gets dead it's a like, third time. It's you are like, so useless. <laughs> yeah, I'm like Armin has to come back and try to dig him out of the rubble, but then you know, another piece of rubble falls on him and he gets a piece of wood stuck yeah, like the, right here. Li- right, right through the chest. Through a lung. Has right through, through a the lung. chest. And, and you know, yeah, I'm just sitting there, just going like, "Is he, can you just die now?" Yeah, I mean, seriously, like, this, you're, Aaron, he's the least interesting out of all the characters, to be honest with you. And the thing is, too, he's so 
just as blind. It's like going, oh, they yeah. they need our help. And there was just like, dude, you're the freaking target. Get out of here. Yeah. And then it annoys me why his freaking Figma sold out so quickly, considering he's the crappiest character in the series. I'm a little bit bitter about that. Um, it's because he's a main character. This show so is like bitter. I'm a little I, bit. A little bit bitter. I had to pay twenty dollars yeah. shipping <laughs> because I really wanted it because I had Mikasa pre ordered. You know, you gotta complete the collection. Yeah, and fortunately and unfortunately for me, I never actually did get it because, you know, I have lack of funds at the moment. <laughs> but so, yeah, it's 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 a little ah, this, this ah. show like we have one more episode too, but I'm just gonna say this now is that You know they're milking it for like four other seasons. Oh yeah, they're gonna. This this show is gonna keep on continuing and no more. Yeah, honestly, we're, I'm, I, I, I'm done. I, I'm I'm actually like, done with this show, but I will give it this much: cool concept, great, great like storytelling to a point. Besides all this stuff like that, character, great artwork, good concept. Just Aaron sucks. <laughs> Yeah, I like. No, I, I won't even say that storytelling's that great. On the, on like, a, honestly, I mean, so, come on, sorry, hum, story uh, concept. Sorry, uh, story concept. I should actually specify because the con the story concept <laughs> was good. Yeah, just um, they did a bad job. Yeah, telling if you it. guys actually enjoyed Attack on Titan, because I enjoyed the first couple episodes, because uh, you know it kind of kept you going, but then it went downhill. If you guys enjoyed it, please let me know why you enjoyed it. Kita at ktdata dot net because I don't understand it. Um. I just don't understand yeah. why this is getting so blown out of proportion the way it is. I mean, yeah. sort of online, I could see, at least for the first, first half. half. But this, in terms of, like, this comparison... In, like, in, after like, the fandom, third episode... It makes no sense. Yeah, it makes like, no sense in how this is more popular than, than sort of online is. Yeah, like, the third ep- uh, like after the third episode, I'm, I start dragging. And I'm like, oh, sh- I think seriously. I think it's just because the the cosplay. I think that's the only reason why yeah. people are just doing it because of cosplay. And then... The fandom kicks in. It's like going, oh, you have to like this in order to be in the cool cl- kids club. I don't care. Uh, I'll make my yeah. own cool kids club. I, like, yeah, the mu- the music is the strong point of this anime, to be honest. Definitely, definitely. Um, but like story wise, ah, uh, like you know, it's gonna become like the butt of jokes. Like, oh, look, another season of Attack on Titan. What are they gonna do? Die? Ah. <laughs> And that's another thing too. So they're talking about like there's only X amount of humans left in the world, and yet they're dropping like flies. Nice, I think yeah. by the time that the season ends from when it began, they lost probably, I would say, close to almost thousands, half, half of the actual population by yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then at that point, itself, like going, what's the actual point? Yeah. You know, like they, they're they're like throwing all their they're throwing all their uh, candidates away like they're nothing by having all these titans killing each other and yet they they have not actually stated a point of why what's I mean, the yeah point you of know there's, they're not going to be able to resolve anything in the next episode that we have yeah i know and all they're going to do is just say like put some cliffhanger and they're saying next season uh, but watch watch you, for the cliffhanger yeah so please tell me if you guys why you like this anime um i mean yeah just why uh oh man all right, Dito. Guess what? That's actually all we had for. Yeah, I'd this be more episode. happy if this is the last episode of Attack on Titan. <laughs> yeah, we'll drag our feet. So, quick reminder again: we're doing three episodes of Stella. So watch all three of them, and we're doing one episode of Attack on Titan. Um, and I'm done with that series on there. Wish it was one more episode of Majestic Prince. To be honest with you, I wish there was no EV. Um. And then again, guys, make sure you check out ktdata.net. By the time this show gets released in the recorded version, the contest will be up. We are giving away a print from our friends at SoSimbo, which is really cool. It's of the uh, Golden Pavilion from Japan, so and it's really awesome. We are also giving away a Hyper Neptunia and Hyper Dimension Neptunia T-shirt. Thank you for our friend Karai for being the model. On the T-shirt, and what what else were we giving away? <laughs> I forget. Uh, petite, Where is it? Nendroid Petite. Oh yeah, the the Black Rock Shooter yes. Nendroid Petite. Black Rock Shooter Nendroid Petite, and then also keep an eye on ktdata.net. There's rumors that the owner is giving away a Wii U to somebody, so the owner can actually have more than one friend on his friend list on his Wii U. 
So yes. <laughs> not not Wii U, but a, a Nintendo Wii U. Fancy, you know. Um, yeah. So Dito, can you believe it? Two years. No, it still it still feels foreign to me. But the fact that only we're giving away good stuff, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's been we a good can two years, do dude. This now <laughs> it's been a good two years, and I hope for more many many years to come. I hope you don't get sick of me. So th- that's thank you already long. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for sticking around for so long. Because yes, also I do want to make one more announcement too. Nis America has given me another game to review. So if you're willing to give me some time, and you see in the next and see no time, I want it now. Days. Hit publish. <laughs> no! Hit publish. Um, it's going to be, I just forgot the name of it because I just barely got it. It's going to be, um, uh, oh, there it is. The, the guided fate paradox. Hit publish. Yeah. I read. Yeah. (laughs) And it will be out here in November. I think November, I think it's going to say like November 2nd or 4th or something. I'll give you the dates later, but. Do, do check it out. It is going to be another JRPG, and it seems to be a dungeon crawler. This is one I have Ooh. never seen before, and I'm actually going to be completely bo- it's completely new to me. Loot, loot, loot. More loot. Loot. Yes. Loot. All I can say is it's about angels, majesticness, and Any princes? apparently... Not princes, but majestic angels, and apparently equipping your angels for various looks and something. I don't know. So... Do check that out in the next uh, week or so. Yep. So, um, also make sure you guys, like I said, any feedback, Kita at ktdata.net. I'd love to get some feedback from you guys. Um, or you can leave it <laughs> on our. Two, been two years, we haven't gotten email yeah, yet. <laughs> I don't even know where that jingle is anymore. Um, <laughs> you can uh, also leave us feedback on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash ktdata.net, or on Twitter at ktdata, or on uh, Google Plus. Just search for the Kita Anime Podcast. And of course, you can watch live and ask um, Coons to describe every single one of his body pillows by uh, coming he, he will to do it. He'll do it very excitedly. Yeah. He'll be like, um, <laughs> our, our next live broadcast is in two weeks, which is November 5th, 2013. And you can find the URL for the live is ktdata.net slash live. Come to the chat room. It's always fun. Or make fun of Rev. He's always there too. He's lurking. Yeah. He's he's our uh, reg- resident troll. And also, you can check out uh, Coons and his body pillows. Yep. So, uh, or 2015? No, 13. November. Um, and of, of that two weeks from now. Yeah, two weeks from now. You got uh, the two year thing. <laughs> I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> Time is this relative. Is, this is this is what happens when you do this for two years. Time is all relative. Anyways, guys, we will see you in two weeks. Till later. Bye bye. Bye. Watch out for these pillows. Oh yeah. <laughs> Whoops. Sure, just breathe deeply into the microphone. Woo, all the ladies out there. <laughs>